In this video series, we're gonna talk about resource and capacity management in Jira and the big picture. This series will consist of few videos in which we will talk through this topic from perspective of different environments. So in this video, we're gonna cover waterfall environment and in following videos, we're gonna cover agile and hybrid environment. This is part of our effort to provide the best possible training around Jira, Confluence and whole Atlassian ecosystem. If you would like to support us, subscribe to the channel, like the video, you can always leave a comment if you have any further questions and remember you can always reach out to us for one of our paid services like customized trainings, consultations or implementation. At the beginning of the video, I mentioned that we will be looking at the Jira and big picture features regarding capacity and resource management. But for the waterfall approach, the problem is that Jira by itself doesn't really have any features that would support that. So Jira allows us to do some planning and capacity man management in agile environment using, for example, Sprint's feature, which we will discuss during our next video but not really for waterfall. That's why we have to jump in right into the big picture because this is the tool that expands Jira with some additional features that will allow us to do more robust uh, planning in waterfall approach where we will be able to look at our resources and available capacity. All right, so let's have a look at the tool and at the particular case, use case that we will be covering. So I'm currently in big picture in one of my boxes. So if you do not know what box is, I will refer you to one of our previous videos. For now, for simplicity, let's just assume this is our initiative or our project that we need to plan. It contains all the tasks that we need to deliver and of course resources available to us. So to do the resource planning or capacity planning, uh, what we need is, of course, we need the tasks. They have to be estimated and planned on the timeline. Uh, and this may vary from organization to organization, right? The order of, this, of these actions, who does that? So who does the estimate, who does the planning? But let's imagine that this is my initiative. I have some tasks that are already planned on the timeline, so I know how much time I want them to take. I know what are the dependencies between the, those tasks. So basically, I did some initial planning on the timeline. Now I want to verify this plan against our capacity and see whether we are in fact able to deliver tasks according to that plan, or maybe we will head, uh, we, we will hit some bottleneck uh, because we do not have enough resources at a specific moment in time. So I did this plan and now where can I check the resources and the capacity that we have? Well, of course, I am currently in a Gantt module. I could switch right away to the resource module and check uh, how does it look over there. But before we do that, let's click over here. So we have a resource resource management over here. You can see that below some small resource panel appeared. Uh, it's hard to read because the aggregation is pretty granular. We will do monthly aggregation instead. Okay, so what you see over here is basically uh, we see what is the workload in general in total of tasks that are unassigned and the workload on all the resources. Over here by resources, we mean individual users. So what we see now is that basically on me, I'm green everywhere. So that means that tasks that are assigned to me, uh, or basically I will not be a bottleneck. I still have some capacity to take on more the tasks and basically deliver more work. But over here, Tom, we see that there are parts where he's green, that's good. But over here, he's red, he's over allocated. We can see that basically he's heavily over allocated over here. We can click on this and see where this over allocation comes from. So we see which task 
is assigned to Tom in this period of time and what kind of workload, uh, workload is coming from this task. So now the question, what we can do with that? So, of course, because we know which task is over allocating Tom, we could look for this task over here on the gun chart, see how it's planned and either reassign it, spread it over a longer period of time or change estimate. Maybe we can change a scope if we see that someone is over allocated. Uh, but why I'm not doing that here is because this view is really simplified. Uh, it gives us some insight into where we are. Uh, we can we can hit these bottlenecks, but I wanted to go to the resource module and show you how it looks over there and what we can do over there. There are several uh, features that I really like. So let's switch over to the scope. We are currently in in team view, so I will switch to individuals. Now, I have different aggregation here, so there I had monthly aggregation. Uh, in the gun view here I have weekly, so that's why we see a bit, bit different numbers. But let's look, for example, over here. Here I am over allocated. Clearly, in this week, in August, I, I'm not much, but a bit over allocated. We can drill down, see exactly what tasks are planned uh, during this, this period of time, right? So we see that. There are several of them planning this week. Uh, some of them are close to the end. Some of them are, are close to the beginning. And when we click, click uh, on this number, we will see exactly which tasks are providing what numbers or what, work, what workload. So again, what we can do with that is that we could try to expand this ta task for a longer period of time. So the estimate that is provided on this task currently I think we are looking at original estimate. Let me double check. Uh, yes, so basically we're taking the original estimate from the task and spreading it throughout the period on which it is planned. So if I make this task longer, this original estimate will be spread over longer period of time. Uh, and thanks to that, uh, it will be lower for each day, for each week. So this is the this is first thing we can do. Second, we can reassign the task to someone else, of course. Uh, now, there is certain risk with doing that over here, and that is we do not see dependencies here, which might seem like quite a downside because if there is a dependency with this task and we move it or expand it, make it end later, some other tasks can be pushed also to the future and it can, Im it can impact our resource planning somewhere down the line, right? So this is not the best solution. So th th this is the downside for changing the start and end date. Uh, when it comes to re reassigning, during reassigning, it's quite easy to, uh, by mistake, move the task one day. <laughs> you can see I just did that now. Uh, one day earlier on one day later. So this is also not great. Fortunately, Big Picture provides this really, really nice feature to, to address that. And that is the scenarios. So you can see over here I have scenario. I will create a new scenario. So normally when we are doing the planning, when we are changing the tasks or reassigning, it impacts issue, Jira issue. So basically when we're changing uh, where the task is on the timeline, it changes the start and end date. When we're reassigning the task, it changes the task assignee. Fortunately, we can go to the scenario like we, we are now, and now we can play around with these tasks without really updating Jira, underlining Jira issues. So you can see that I will switch back to the live scenario, which shows me the data from Jira. And you will see that the change that I did is not visible here, but I'll get back to my scenario. Change is here. Okay, what does it tell us and what does it allow us to do? Because I did this change in scenario, it was not reflected on the issue but still I can see what impact did it have on my plan. So basically now, if there would be some dependency with this task, 
this dependent task would also be moved on a timeline and I would see all the changes, all the cascading changes that were triggered by my change uh, over here and I would see whether be, be, uh, because I moved the task some uh, to resolve one bottleneck, maybe some bottle, other bottlenecks appeared down the line. If yes, then maybe I need to uh, go back and try to do something else, to try to replan it in other way. But if this change is okay, if it solved our bottleneck and, and did not create any other, I can go over here and basically say, okay, I want to merge it to live. These changes are okay with me. And now the live scenario was updated. You see that now I'm in live scenario, but the change that I introduced is visible here. So basically all, all the underlining Jira issues were updated. This is great because very often there is cascade of dependencies. And obviously, if you know you need to replan this task, make it longer, for, for example, it will be hard to so to say manually change what would be impact on all the following tasks. You won't be going through 50 tasks, checking who's assigned to them, whether after the move it will be okay or not. Here in scenario mode, mode we can just do the move and see what will be the impact without really affecting underlining issues. And thanks, thanks to that, basically being saved, we will not break our plan. Uh, we the changes will be affected when we know they are okay. So uh, despite the fact that we do not see dependencies here, the scenarios are really, really nice feature that allows us to play around with our plan and, and be sure that we'll be able to resolve all the conflicts and all the bottlenecks. Now, again, one of the features that is really nice in the resource module that is not available in the Gantt is this summary. So as I mentioned, depending on the process in your organization, the order of steps might be different, right? So uh, in some organizations, you, you will create the timeline plan first, then do the estimates, and then do the assignment to, to specific people. In some organizations, first you, first you will do assignment because you know who has the competences to to, to estimate and to resolve the issue, then there will be estimate and after that the planning. So there can be multiple, multiple uh, steps or multiple di different paths. But what is great is that in some cases where you already have estimate but the tasks are not yet assigned to the people, you do not know who will be doing them. Here in the summary, you will be able to see if you have bottlenecks in total. So basically, this shows us overall, this can show us overall capacity of all the resources that we have and overall workload. So if we create a plan, tasks are not assigned and we will get red somewhere over here. This basically means that we do not have enough resources in this specific moment in time. Uh, reassigning the tasks won't help, right? Because some of the capacity of our resources is smaller than the sum of the uh, workload coming from all the tasks. So we either need to expand the tasks uh, or provide more resources in our, uh, in our project. So this is something that can be really uh, red flag very early in the planning, right? So you won't be trying 50 different plans. Uh, trying to resolve that kind of uh, red uh, red periods of time on individual resources right away after tasks are estimated and, and roughly planned on the timeline you will see that hey hey we do not have enough resources here maybe we need to replan it or maybe we need to provide enough resources so that is a really cool feature and and very often it simplifies planning because right off the bat we know that that uh, specific plans cannot be cannot be delivered. Up till now, we did, or I've shown you the planning on individuals, mm, right? So you can see that I was basically assigning tasks to the users. Big picture is using Jira assignee field to represent that information. What if we want to do the planning on the team level? So 
Big Picture allows for that too. Over here we have Team View. If I'll switch over here, you'll see that now on the left, instead of individual users, I have teams. Teams are defined in Big Picture. And basically the capacity of the team is sum of the capacity of its members. So we can do the team planning. Uh, you can see that I have some tasks that are unassigned, some tasks assigned to the team. I can do basically reassignment. So I will take this task and I can assign it to one or the other team. Uh, it works really similar to what we've seen for individuals. The numbers are obviously different because the, the capacity is calculated in different way. So overall, again, you'll see red. Probably we need to do the replanning and, and try to address that problem. What is really interesting case is that if you're doing just the team planning, you are not interested in individual user planning, you may just use resource, resource module in this view and just do the planning for the team. Do not really care who exactly will be doing the task. As long as the, as the team has capacity to deliver the work, you know that the team will be able to, to handle that. But if you're normally doing the capacity planning on individual level, it still may make sense to use team view to some degree. Uh, now, the most often case in which I see both of these used is when we're doing the longer term planning, right? So you may know that tasks that will be started in the week will be done by, by Tom, for example, but in six months, mm, maybe Tom will be sick, maybe Tom won't be, will not be working on my project anymore. Uh, so it's not really uh, uh, worth doing that kind of plan, probably some high level task planning uh, that far in the future on individuals. But on the team, it might make sense because team membership, who is the member of the team, can change. Team probably will remain, right? So we can do this high level uh, task planning like half year in the future on the team level, make sure that team has enough capacity or just check how much capacity team will require in half a month. Uh, so let's let's just show that quickly. We can switch, for example, to half a year view with, with, with monthly aggregation. We can move to the next month and basically do the planning for this longer period of time on the team level. Make sure that the, that the team ha has capacity. And when we will get closer to start of specific task, we can get back to the individual view display only members of specific team over here by selecting this we will see the members of specific team of course i've picked the team that maybe do not have any members uh, and then we can assign the task that earlier was assigned just to the team to individual members and then we will make sure that okay on one hand in the long-term planning we know that the team has enough capacity and when we get closer to do to start the task we will start replanning and make sure that uh, the work is granular enough so we can assign it to specific user without users without over allocating them and do this more precise planning on the user level. Okay, so that's it for this video. Hope it was useful to you and give you some perspective on how big picture can be used in the resource and capacity management and planning. Uh, in the next video, we're going to talk more about Agile approach, what Jira offers and how Big Picture expands on it. So uh, stay tuned and hear you in the next video.